I am going to demonstrate an invention of Lord Kelvin's, which he referred to as the water dropper condenser. Condenser was the original name for capacitor. It has also been called Lord Kelvin's hydroelectric generator, Lord Kelvin's electrostatic generator, or Lord Kelvin's thunderstorm. It uses electrostatic induction on falling water to charge a capacitor. So it is an electrostatic generator with the energy being stored on a capacitor. So I have four unlined one quart paint cans. I have the bottoms cut out of the top two and the upper left is connected to the lower right and the upper right is connected to the lower left. So one conductor of our capacitor will be the upper left lower right can and the other conductor will be the upper right lower left paint cans. So I, I have a carboy up here as the source of water and it's going to get split and what I'm using here are air tubes for an aquarium with valves for the air tubes and I cut a coat hanger and taped it to the air tubes to give it some support. It doesn't take much leakage to prevent us from accumulating charge on the capacitor. So although I'm using wood for support, you can see at the top here I have a piece of PVC over the wood to isolate the upper paint cans from the wood and on the bottom I have the paint cans resting on pieces of PVC to isolate them from the floor and my wood base. I've attached a ball spark gap across the capacitor. So as the voltage increases across the capacitor, that voltage drop will appear across our gap here. And when the electric field between those two brass balls gets to the breakdown strength of air, we will observe a spark which will discharge our capacitor. I've also connected an electroscope to one of the terminals of the capacitor. In this case, it's the upper left paint can that it's attached to. Let me start the water flowing. And as it's charging, you can see those two leaves separating in the electroscope. And when we have discharge, they collapse. So now let's focus on the brass balls. Let's explain how the Kelvin water dropper condenser works. The two upper paint cans have the bottoms cut out from them. And the top left paint can is connected to the bottom right paint can. That's one conductor of the capacitor. And the top right paint can is connected to the bottom left paint can. That's the other conductor of our capacitor. No matter their history, none of the paint cans will be completely neutral. So let's assume the upper left paint can is slightly negatively charged. 
which means the bottom right paint can also has to be slightly negatively charged. Water has a pH of 7. That means one in every 10 to the 7th water molecules is ionized into H plus and OH minus ions. So let's look at the left stream of water here. So these negative charges on this paint can are going to repel the OH minus ions and attract the H plus ions. So when this drop forms, it will be positively charged, falling into the lower left can, charging it positively, which will mean this upper right can is also being charged positively. So these positive charges on the upper right paint can are going to repel the H plus ions and attract the OH minus ions. So these water drops that fall on the right hand side are negatively charged, charging up the lower right paint can more negatively, which also charges up the upper left can negatively. And this process just keeps continuing. So you keep accumulating more positive charge in the lower left and upper right cans and more negative charge in the lower right and upper left cans. In fact, it gets more and more efficient because the charge and hence the field that's separating the ions at the top of the apparatus is becoming more and more efficient. So the voltage across the capacitor will keep increasing. With the capacitor attached to our spark gap, as the voltage goes up, the electric field intensity in the spark gap increases, and when it reaches the dielectric breakdown strength of air, we get our spark. The water dropping capacitor is an example of an electrostatic generator. The energy building up in the capacitor is coming from gravity. Let's look at the lower left paint can. It is positively charged. So these positive water droplets that are falling are going to feel a columbic repulsion from the lower left paint can. So there's a columbic force like this. But at the same time, those water droplets are experiencing a force due to gravity. So here's the electric field emerging from the lower paint can and the falling charges are a current that's flowing against the electric field. So gravity is going to push these positive charged water droplets against the electric field coming from the lower left paint can. And we have the same thing occurring with the right hand side. So gravity is doing work on the charged water droplets forcing more and more charge onto the capacitor. So the work gravity is doing on the water droplets appears as increased potential energy on the capacitor. Two things to point out. Even if the water was not breaking into drops but remained continuous, the capacitor would still charge. Also, if the distance between the upper paint cans and where the water is leaving the tubing is too great, then the electric field will not be strong enough to prevent ions from leaving the tubing. For instance, on the left-hand side, preventing the negative ions from leaving the tubing and getting into the stream.